the Robot Wars challengers march on into battle to join 11 machines already into the semi-finals, lifting and rolling, pushing and shoving, dragging and flipping. We've had crashing, we've had bashing, we've had smashing, we've had spinning. In a blink of an eye, a robot can die. But hopes ever high and more mayhem is nigh. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the real reason they say Private Ryan, Craig Charles. OK, so Oliver Cromwell had his faults. Like he banned Christmas, when everybody knows that's when all the best films are on. But he was right about one thing. When he had to gather an army to fight the Roundheads, he didn't choose trained fighters, he chose farmers. Hey, you, get off my land! You see, Cromwell knew that there's nothing more vicious than a man who feels threatened, except perhaps a woman on a bad hair day. But you try finding 10,000 of those at short notice. And so, like Cromwell, Robot Wars has gathered together armies of normal folk to do battle for a place in our series semi-finals. And going on past experience, things should get pretty vicious, all right. Philippa, who are this week's this year yokels? Welcome, welcome to the pits up this week. Panzer, to start with, is its interchangeable weapon. You quick, quick, quick demonstration. That's spikes or grinder with that. Isn't that nice? It's just like dolls that I used to have when they were little and had interchangeable outfits. So it was great. <laughs> Undertaker. This, oh, God, I'm standing away from that. Look, just so you know, because you probably won't see it in the arena, on the back of Undertaker's coffin lid is a skeleton. Now, you hopefully won't see that in the arena, will you guys? Hopefully, it'll uh, all go your way and you won't have to have the wreath. We're hoping it's not our funeral. Yeah, we're hoping it's not your funeral as well. This is... War Weevil. Nope. Sorry, Do you know the name Weevil. of your robot? <laughs> evil Weevil. It has a special secret weapon on it that's to do with Velcro and deflecting chainsaws. So look out for that if it gets through the first round. And those are mean and nasty spikes. OK? Troy Terror Robot. Troy Tri Terror Robot. Troy Terror Robot. Thank you very much. I never can pronounce the name of this robot. These spin 360 degrees. They've got them on both sides so it can flip over. Stan, you want to be? Television presenter? Stan wants to present, to present Robot, Robot Wars. Wars. So if I suddenly disappear and Stan comes on, you'll know exactly what's happened. <laughs> I've gone for a coffee break because I've got Stan in. OK. <laughs> this is Atlas. <laughs> Enough said, but I'm not going to run out the batteries because you've got about to fight, and I hope you're going to do very well. And this is Chris, Andy, Steve. <laughs> and, uh, oh, no, I won't do that. Challenger 2. So what's the theory here, then? It's Come on, supposed tell me. to, like, rotate and grab a robot and put it up on top of it. Pull it up on top. Chris, you can come. Yeah. Snuggle in with me. Snuggle in with me and tell me. So it grabs them. Turns them over and impales them on the top of that, yeah? Yeah. And who designed this? Uh, what Dad did. Yeah? Was it all you, Steve? Well, they helped. They come up with the, uh, the wild ideas, basically. And I just have to put it into a bit of metal. This is the Wild Willy team. These eyes light up green. There, there they go. Uh, they have a horrible spike. And uh, how do you think you're going to do? Are you feeling confident? Yeah, uh, confident. well, do maybe, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Hello, guys. Hello. Now, you were responsible for the making of this flip-flop thing. What's it called? Flip-flop fly? Yes. Because it can flip-flop and it can fly. Yes. And um, yes. Dad says that you've been doing lots of ings. What kind of ings? Spannering, welding, soldering, screwing, span spannering, welding, screwing, filing, filing, filing everything. sleeping, everything. Yeah. eating, drinking. drinking. Yeah. 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 Now And now you've got to do battling, haven't they, Jonathan? The chatting, Philippa. Winning or losing Flip Flop Fly against Wild Willy. Atlas simply brilliant against the wild ideas of Challenge 2. Evil Weevil, is that the name? Well, we hope so. Against Triterapot, Stan Stan TV Man. Undertaker, hardly a coffin or a spluttering. Against Panzer, it's not like a little doll at all, Philippa. Well, it's time to disturb the peace. Let the wars begin! From Hereford, 
flip, flop, fly. An Anglo-French project building started in France with a moped was finished in England with track parts. The weapons are spikes and a rolling axe. He's not shy. Flip, flop, fly. I'm new. I'm Conrad and this is Flip, flop, fly. It's powered by four fly windscreen microvotions of a lorry, which, which power cogs and chain off the moped. The whole robot pivots around its axle. When the robot drives forward, it pushes the axe down. When it goes into reverse, it lifts the axe up, flips it back. From Lincoln, Wild Willy. Only took a month to build based on car, fan and starter motors with an aluminium body shell and a large pickaxe with power behind it. At the limit of its weight class, Willy's a whale. I'm Paul. This is Ryan. This is Mark. We're all responsible for building the Wild Willy here. And uh, Mark's responsible for most of the paintwork. And Ryan's helped me with the design. And I've done most of the building of it. And this is um, the weapon pick, which is powered by a 12-volt car starter motor. And it's powered by um, four 12-volt motors. So hopefully we should do some fair amount of damage to uh, another robot that gets in the way. Robot ears, stand by. Flip, flop, fly, looks like a turbine engine. Paul Snook in the middle there wants to build a UFO big enough to carry people. And Wild Willie, Paul Wilcox, the captain, wants to become a professional rally driver. So speed is of the essence, and Wild Willie can get up to 15 miles an hour and immediately on the attack with the slamming pickaxe. They're the weapon of flip, flop, fly, of course, the rolling axe. And meanwhile, Wild Willie decides to take on Bash, which is ill-advised, but fun and devilish too. I wonder if Paul Wilcox and Wild Willie just regretting that now. Turning on the attack on Flip Flop Fly. It's a strange looking beast, isn't it? The fly, there's Paul Schnuck, youngsters, Conrad and Luke Angel, who wants to walk on the moon one day. A bit of moonwalking on the arena floor from Flip Flop Fly. And there, look, Wild Willie pushing the fly across the arena and slamming it against the wall. This is a good drive. Bash! Not a great deal of damage done, just bouncing away. Good design, Flip Flop Fly. Now slow on the attack. Willie comes forward again and fly towards the pit, but just veering away at the last moment. Up on one side. <laughs> That's curious. There again, the pickaxe of Wild Willie seems to be in one position. I wonder if it's stuck. It, did, did I just see a little bit of a, a tear or a warp to the slot above the, the pickaxe? No, it's OK. I thought for a minute it was stuck, but it's not. Coming on the attack again. But it's needle-like and not causing great problems for Flip Flop Fly. But is the fly here? Immobilised. What's happened? No. Again, moving slowly, very, very slowly. Paul Wilcox at the control of Willie now on the attack once again. I think it's been the more aggressive of the two robots. Bounces off the arena floor. Will that give it enough momentum to shove it into the pit? No. But the fly hardly buzzing at all, really. The spikes on the arena floor oh, causing problems to Willie. Where's he gone here? Paul Wilcox. Oh, no. After all that work. Off the arena spike, a little forward spurt, and now on the edge of the pit. They're teetering, they're tottering, but this is clever. They're trying to use the pickaxe here to bounce themselves away from the pit. Can they do it? Can they get away? No! Matilda says no, and now in comes Dead Metal. Cease. Oh, that is silly, silly Billy Wild Willy. The judges will make the decision, but you're immobilised. That's clear. It's a controversial decision, but Flip Flop Fly get it, and they're through to round two. It's a great battle. Yeah. It's Thank a you. great battle. Yeah, you're all right with that, really, aren't you? Yeah, no yeah. problem at all. Yeah, I know, yeah. that's it, yeah. Cool. Definitely. We all know where we stand, then. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Why are Willie driving themselves into oblivion? Flip Flop Fly go through. Next up, the robot with a global appeal against Challenger 2. From Bath, 
Atlas. Two wheelchair motors provide the power, a spike and cutting disc, the weaponry, two millimeter steel, the shell, the wheels are from a tractor, a lawnmower, and a golf trolley. Will Atlas conquer the roboteers' world? Hi, I'm Richard. This is Jan, and this is my partner Paul, and this is Atlas. Um, as you can see, we've got a, a West Country rough and ready paint finish. The robot is powered by 12 and 24 volts and has a 12 volt cutting disc at the rear and a front dozing blade. Also, we have a little man on top who's expendable. From High Wycombe, Challenger 2. Dad, Steve, Dub flutters back to the wars after fighting with Challenger in the last series. The rotating lifting device is key here with its fearsome spikes. Come and get me, is the challenge. My name's Steve Dub. This is Challenger 2, a development of Challenger from the last war. These are my two team members, Andy and Chris, my two sons. Since the last war, we've developed a new weapon for the front. It's an upwardly rotating device doing about 100 RPM and it's driven by a motorcycle starter motor. Hopefully, it'll lift another robot up into the air and we'll be able to push underneath it. We certainly need something in the last series playing King of the Castle against Matilda. Couldn't lift the house robot up. Lacked weight, was pushed away, off and out. Now back and improved though. Robot ears, stand by. Atlas from Bath with Richard Dallimore. He'd like to be like Indiana Jones. Mm. And Challenger too. Three. Team captain two, Steve Dove and boys one. Chris and Andrew. Chris is a big karate expert. Chop, chop. Out comes Challenger too, nervously. Ah, so Atlas moving away. And now just pushing back against Challenger 2. All this rather tentative. I love, I love the little model on top of Atlas. That's great, isn't it? Great fun. The care and design of these robots, the work that's gone into them this series has been fantastic. All credit to all the teams who've taken part. Sometimes we have a laugh at them, but earnest endeavor from each and every robot here. Young Chris and Andrew at the controls of Challenger 2. And here it is. You've yet to see that flailing, rotating weapon at the front really get into action. We've yet to see anything from Atlas, to be honest, beyond, uh, well, that actually. And I think Atlas is stuck on the arena wall. I think Atlas is immobilised. Let's turn the pages of the Atlas, shall we? Uh, which country is that going to come down in? If on this earth somewhere, well, it's going to come bashing down to earth with a bang any moment, Atlas. What a disappointment. <laughs> and now we start to turn up the heat. And I wonder if that's going to be melted any second. Oh! <laughs> Lost the head. That's splendid. <laughs> oh dear. That was super. <laughs> Shunt turns Atlas up and over. Well, I was talking about all the work and preparation. Oh dear. Sorry, Richard, Janet, and Paul in the Atlas team. I know you've worked very hard, but this is this is what we love, you see. All your work and all our fun. They're just peeling away bits now of Atlas, having their fun, the house robots. No question who's the winner here. Cease. Kill a lot enjoying it. What a finish. Atlas torched and hammered. Challenger 2, go through. What a barbecue. <laughs> Hurt. You're not hurt. hurt at all. You can't stop laughing. <laughs> no, no, we loved it in here. Everyone in the pitch was really, was really enjoying it. He was expendable. We give him that. Yeah. He was expendable, but it was full-time entertainment. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Through, how was it? Pretty what? scary when you first went up, but then you get used to it. Yeah. So I try not to hit the house robot so they don't sort of start beating you up. Yeah. You're gobsmacked, don't you know what to You've survived Robot Wars round one and you've got through. So you've got another one to do. <laughs> they can't quite believe it. Atlas lost its head and virtually everything else. Challenger 2 go through. Evil Weevil next up against Triterabox. From Cardiff in Wales, 
Evil Wheeler. Captain Kevin Pritchard was part of the title-winning Panic Attack team in the last series, and you can see the similarities here. Electric-operated spikes, the shell ballistic fiberglass. One to watch this. Hi, I'm Andrew, this is Michael, and this is our teacher, Mr. Pritchard. And this is our robot, Evil Weevil, representing the Lantanum score. The shell is made out of fiberglass and Kevlar. And these are our main weapons, some lifting claws, which can do some pretty nifty damage. Well, involved with panic attack in the last wars, Kevin Pritchard there on the left-hand side, good team, won the competition, had everything, good steering, control, Maneuverability, power, the reigning champions, of course. From Bristol, try Terrabots. At 75.2 kilos, it's the lightest in the field. Various sharp ramming weapons and the unique triangular construction means there's no front, back, top or bottom. Omnidirectional, that's a new one for us. Roboteers, stand by. The Welsh team with Evil Weevil, Kevin Pritchard, teacher, Andrew Davis and Michael Walsh, the pupils, and try Terrabot. Three, With the father and son team, two, Stan one, and Jason launch brick. Activate. And it's tried terrible. Oh, moving quickly across the arena floor. Now, this is a completely new sort of design for us. It has the stream maker course, a self writing mechanism, it has the spikes, it has the casters. It can go every which way. And at the moment, it's impaled Evil Weevil on the arena wall, but they're away. Again, magnificent design. And it has those little. Velcro strips, we're told, as well. Quite what they want to stick onto with the Velcro, I'm not too sure. Certainly not Sergeant Bash. That's tried Terrabot's problem at the moment, but they're away. I'm getting a message from the pits that the Velcro on top of Evil Weevil is designed to mesh itself up in a chainsaw or any other sort of trap mechanism with opponents or house robots, of course. And look at this! Triterabot is certainly stuck on Evil Weevil. Smoke coming out there of Triterabot! What on earth is all this smoke billowing out? There's, there's a starter motor from a motorcycle, van wiper motors as well in there, but nothing to cause smoke like this. And Triterabot has impaled itself on the Evil Weevil machine. That there, there, as flummoxed as we are. There you can see the spike has impaled itself on on that evil weevil, but okay now. Some sort of smoke screen perhaps to suck evil weevil in, thinking they were in trouble. But they're not. An evil weevil now on the attack. You get to see those front spikes being brought into operation from the evil weevil boys. Now perhaps in underneath Triterabot. A low ground clearance of 50 millimeters. And a splendid triangular machine. And up on its side, where it can go any which way, frontwards, backwards, but it's stuck there on its side. And that really is a turn-up. Now, can the Evil Weevil team finish them off here? One last shunt should do it. Oh, missed. Let's go back again, boys. By Terrabot surviving. Jason launch Sprint is a potholer. That's one of his great hobbies. And he's got to dig himself out of a hole here. This is dead metal. But he's getting some punishment and loving it here. Jason Launch Spray, that's his machine that's getting punishment from Shunt with the pickaxe. Also, Evil Weevil, a little nudge on the side. Michael Walsh at the controls, a 15-year-old. Evil Weevil deciding to push into Shunt as well. I wouldn't take on the house robots quite yet because that's your punishment. Cease. Ooh, says Michael. But cease call just in time. Evil Weevil should go through here. Evil Weevil, the victors! What, what does it feel like to be the victim of an orgy of house robots? Oh, it's brilliant. Loved it. Loved it. <laughs> I loved every second of it, yeah, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Most of it came from the scrap. You can just take it straight back then and scrap it. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> scrap it, it were very... You were silly, really, because you had a little go at Shunt. I mean, what were you trying to do? Stand up for the other Michael team? Oh, come on, Michael. Uh, yeah, I was... They were getting a bash in. There was two robots on them. I thought, I'd make it two on two. You brave man, and yet you, it seemed you'd already won. Yeah. It was a bit nerve wracking, but I make got it. Make it a bit more exciting. Yeah. Yeah, make it a bit more exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, it's very.
Valiant or Foolhardy. Evil Weevil through, Tri Terrabot have gone. Undertaker against the Panzer next. From Lancashire, Undertaker. You can pull a Land Rover and cut its tyres to shreds with its side. The shell's two millimetre thick aircraft aluminium, go kart wheels, and transmission provides speeds of 50 miles an hour. This is Undertaker, I'm Kevin. This is John and Philip. Right, uh, here we have the Undertaker, and our body is made out of T6 aluminium, but we've painted it so that it looks like wood, and that goes on in three layers. It goes white, and then a light brown, and then a dark brown, and the brush strokes make it look like it's made of wood. Uh, we had a plaque engraved, and we also got handles to make it look like a coffin, because it thought it was quite a good theme. From Gloucester, Panzer. On paper, as dangerous as a Panzer tank with its disc cutter and aluminium shell, but a quarter of the 79.9 kilos lies in the tracks. Steering and mobility could be a problem. I'm Simon, this is Crom, this is my eldest son Richard, and this is our robot Panzer. It's electrically powered, with two invalid carriage motors at the back, two large batteries in the front. This is our main weapon. It's a two-stroke petrol disc cutter, the blade does 5,000 RPM. And when we're not using that, we have this. Hopefully, we're going to cut pieces off all our opponents. Robot ears, stand by. There's the undertaker with the brushwork, the woodwork, the uh, panels and, and so on. And uh, young John Robinson there told us all about that. And Panzer, the most frightening thing about the Panzer team, I think, Three. is Crom on the right. Frightened me anyway. Jeez. Here comes Panzer trundling out. Low centre of gravity. Could hit a problem if those tracks, the rubber tracks, get caught on anything, really. And Undertaker has the great pickaxe, but Undertaker flicked up by the arena spikes and bounced around like some grisly toy out there. There's the camera on Killalot. Close up and underneath there, the Undertaker. R.I.P. You may well be resting in peace within seconds, Undertaker. Panzer still doing all the work here. And now pushing Undertaker across the arena floor. John Robinson, Phil Robinson and Kevin Shirk would need to do something here. This is great power from Panzer. We knew it had this strength. Now backing away and allowing Bash to take over. It's very civil of it. It's a worthy tactic, of course. Well versed in Robot Wars lore. Push an opponent into the CPZ, the corner patrol zone, allow the house robots to take over. This is good work here, I think, by Panzer. Again, nudging the Undertaker away. And you'll have noticed throughout this, they kept out of harm's reach from that great weapon on top of Undertaker, the great side, which we haven't really seen come into play at all. I don't think there's a great deal of life left in the Undertaker team, to be honest. They've got to do something here very, very quickly. Crom on the right, but he's given the Undertaker team the stare. They may have the side, but I think they've been psyched out of this. Trying to get control of Undertaker and push it back into the battle. I think it's all too little too late. Just spinning Cease. around and doing very little. And I think this is Panzer's battle. And I think the tank will be back to fight again. What do the judges say that? And the judges have given it to Panzer. What do you think of this as your practice run for a glittering Robot Wars career in the future? Well, we did better last year, actually. Oh, no. <laughs> I didn't like We're to going remind down, you. We're going downhill at the moment. <laughs> All right, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry, thank it was you. just so brief. <laughs> you enjoy it? Lovely. Yeah. Good. That's great. Good. Okay. Any work to do before the next bounce? Better batteries. Yes. Change batteries. Better what? Batteries. Batteries. Yeah. Yes, they they failed halfway through. Oh. We lost power. Oh, that's well, why we're don't going want. so slow. Oh, well, batteries. Yeah. Okay. I thought you said batteries. That's why no, I was batteries. Oh, off you get then. Change your batteries. Thanks. <laughs> Think yourself lucky. That's all you got to do. Yeah. It was a slow death march, but Panzer has laid Undertaker to rest. In the second round, Panzer will now meet Challenger Two. It's Evil Weevil against Flip Flop Fly, and we'll take a rest. Well, round two's coming up, but now let's try and beat the high score in our Pinball Warrior Tournament. Let the trials begin. Craig, let's have a quick reminder of the scores so far, shall we? 
First up, Dominator setting the pace and still top of the leaderboard. Good scoring all round. Crusader got off to a good start. But then, oops. Eye of Newt made slow progress, steady, but too slow. Now, Six Pack was courageous, bold. A good challenger here. Fine scoring, too. Kilohertz, slow off the mark, then started getting points on the board, built up ahead of Steam, and ran into Shunt. And then our final challenges so far, Jazzy Paintwork, terrible run, only 35 points scored by Rox2, and that's the lowest so far. And there we have it, Dominator, 160 points, six-pack, the only worthy challenger, really. Until Oblivion 2, perhaps, built at Trinity School Croydon as a sponsored project, powered by two C5 motors with an electric axe as the weapon. <laughs> Tom James at the controls. Soren and Sophia Belendron with him. By. Three, two, one, activate. And I would think they'd go straight for the barrels and easy points. As you can see, five for each of the barrels tumble. Underneath to knock barrels skittling. That's a good tactic. Now down the arena wall, dodging the spikes. And impaled by those spikes now. Aiming at the 50-point target tyre, but that, you see, is guarded by Bash. Getting 50 points for nudging the tyre, but in comes Killanot, and Killanot has the freedom of the arena. And I think Oblivion 2 is out of this. They're immobilised. They've gone, and now they're just fodder for the house robots. Kill a lot, dead metal, and Oblivion 2. Well, what a disappointment. They were picking up points steadily, not spectacularly. The wheels are turning, but there's, there's nothing in the motors. They know it. A shake of the head there from Tom James, very disappointed. Push towards the, the bricks, no points in that. In comes Killalot. Oh, in comes Bash! Look what Bash has done to Killalot! The flamethrower has caught Killalot's brain alight, it seems. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Cease. Well, Killalot on fire. What a turn up for the books, that is. Someone's got to get into the arena and put Killalot out. He will not like being hot under the collar. Look at the grisly sight of Killalot. Brooding, angry. What have you done to me, he says. Oblivion 2. The barrels, at least 20 points there, and another five. So it was steady, the tyre attacked, but it was around about now that the motors went. Kill a lot, dead metal, all one bash, and kill a lot on fire. That's splendid. And confirmation, 75 points for Oblivion 2. Dominator still in the lead. There'll be more pinball wizardry next time, but now let's charge back into the wars. With our survivors, Panzer against Challenger 2, Evil Weevil against Flip Flop Fly, and Philippers with those Evil Weevil boys. How does the Evil Weevil feel about the opposition? It's uh, a bit of a strange contraption. We don't really know what to do with it. We're going to push it around a bit and see what happens. <laughs> okay. It's a very strange shape. It is very strange shape. Does that, does that go for both of you as well? Push yeah. it around a bit and see what yeah, happens? Yeah, um, try and cripple it, really. OK. <laughs> OK, all right. <laughs> hey, Flip Flop Fly. No. The evil weevil isn't sure what to do with you. <laughs> so what are you going to do with them? Oh, we're going to push them around a bit. It's a funny shape, isn't it? Oh, my God. <laughs> Yes, indeed, funny shapes in the pits, and there are three of them. The Evil Weevil team. Kevin Pritchard, Andrew Davis and Michael Walsh. And Flip Flop Fly. Paul and Conrad Snook and Luke Angel. Robert Hereford against by. Cardiff here. Three. Something of a, a local rivalry. One. Activate. Evil Weevil is the quicker of the two robots. It's a strange old thing, Flip Flop Fly, isn't it? It's like a, a turbine from a, a jet revolving. It's hardly jet engine though, in terms of power or speed. Oh, Snoop at the controls. 
but it's Evil Weevil on the attack. Biting in underneath with the spikes. Evil Weevil backing away. Flip Flop Ride trying to get that to great axe weapon to come in. The rolling axe also with its spikes. And Evil Weevil driven into the CPZ. And now taking punishment from Shunt through the, the top of the ballistic fiberglass. Oh, just missing. The great axe of Shunt almost down through one of the holes in the arena floor. And now, look at this. Axe to axe, weapon to weapon. Slam, bam. Thank you, ma'am, says Flip Flop Fly away from Shunt. Evil Weevil keeping its distance sensibly slow. Well, we've seen the power now of that great weapon. In goes Evil Weevil again underneath. It's a bit like a huge great pendulum, that flip-flop fly weapon of Paul's. That's the camera on shunt. The great rubber tyres of flip-flop fly. Should they be pushed towards the flame pit, we'll be in trouble. I don't think any of the house robots here can cause great damage to flip-flop fly unless it is to those tyres. Bouncing off, though, the weapon of shunt. So in comes Matilda with a chainsaw tail to rip and shred and flip-flop fly. All right, let's all have a go. But I'll tell you what, the fact that the house robots are closing in on flip-flop fly means it must be immobilised out there. They're allowed to do it if there's no life left in the house robot. It's still moving, but there's obviously something wrong. Matilda, kill a lot, they're all in here. One of the tyres seems to be slowly deflating, no wonder. Shunt takes a close-up of Kill A Lot for its holiday snap album. And just lifting, flip, flop, fly away, fly away, all our hopes and dreams. A flutter, Cease. a shudder, but no more than that. The tyre deflated, the hopes have gone. An evil weevil at the bottom of your picture has won this one. Well, flip, flop, fly flops out of the competition. Evil Weevil goes through to the next round. Hey, let's hear it for Evil Weevil! Oh, that's a great one. Else, for all the would-be uh, 2CV owners in the near future, look what can happen with good French engineering. <laughs> How are you feeling now, then? It kind of must be a bit of a mixture of feelings, is it? It is, yeah, because yeah. we're, you know, great. It started and we got through and all, but um, curious about what we're going to come up against now. So. Okay, so a mixture of jubilation and anticipation. Trepidation. Yep. And trepidation. For the evil weaving. Ooh, that's spooky. Philip, I mean. She scared me. Evil Weevil through. Next up, Panzer against the Challenger 2. How do you feel about your contestant, about who you've been drawn up against? Um, interesting. It should be interesting. Why? Very. Come on. Well, we're not going to get very close to him with all the prongs he's got sticking out. That's very true. But how would you actually get him? That's defensive. What about the attack? Well, there's only one place he hasn't got any prongs, and that's in the back. So we're hoping to push him. Oh, OK. OK, well, look out for that. Come on, then, come on, then. What were you saying about his treads earlier? I want to snap. You want them to snap? <laughs> I'm not giving away their tactics, and they're not allowed to look as we discuss what are your tactics. Because <laughs> they know they can't get close to you because of all your prongs. Just try and push him down the pit. Push him down the pit, that's what you're going to attempt to do, yeah? Yes? We're all agreed on this. Who's doing the driving? You again. You again, OK. <laughs> Who's doing the weapons? Me. You. Who's doing the lights? Uh, I think <laughs> <I'm> me. <laughs> the Panzer team. Simon Jones on the left wants to write a sci-fi series. Crom on the right plays Cool and Skittles. And there's the Challenger 2 series. Robotians Chris Dove at the weapons. Up. Andrew Dove at the controls. Three, two, one. Activate. So it's Panzer again slowly moving forward, trying to stay clear of that front weapon of Challenger 2. Spinning at 100 revs per minute. And really, I would say Panzer's main hope here is to push Challenger 2 to a CPZ and let the house robots take over. Challenger 2 weaponry, vastly superior. Not a great D 
difference in the speeds here. Challenger 2 can only get up to about four miles an hour. Panzer up and over. As long as it stays out of trouble and Panzer 2 can get a shove or two in, it has a hope. And we have, of course, a history of upsets and underdogs winning in Robot Wars. They're the front spikes of Panzer. Richard Jones at the controls, wants to run his own business, wants to get straight A's in his GCSEs, loves to glide as well. Keen glider, and gliding over the arena floor, Challenger 2 towards the pit, and that's where I thought Panzer would have a chance, shoving and pushing, and Challenger 2 is in the pit. And this is an upset, and in comes Killalot now, with the front prong to lift Challenger 2 up and away and into oblivion, perhaps. Now, Panzer taking punishment from Shunt. Killalot exacting retribution as well for the punishment done to Challenger 2. Young Chris and Andrew Dove at the controls of Challenger 2. What can they do? Shunt and Killalot in for the, for the slaughter. Well, the, the young lads can't do anything here. They've just got to stand and watch their beloved. What being? Bashed up! Oh dear, and perforated and punctured! Tee hee! It's House Cease. Robot Lee! They were bored, you see! Had to do something. Well, now the House Robots have stopped misbehaving, I can tell you that the clear winner is Panzer. Panzer's through to the next round. Did you enjoy that as well? Yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah? Yes, yeah, everything according to plan. Good. And the next bout? Uh, much better, we'll put the stone saw on. Oh, the yeah, what? The stone, stone saw. Go on, 5,000 RPM, 12 inch blade. Oof. With statistics like that, you want to be dreading it on robot walls. <laughs> <laughs> the vital statistics that matter Panzer through. And of course, in the final of this heat, they'll meet Evil Weevil. Well, two more robots decommissioned, two more to go over the top for a place in our series semi finals. Craig, how did they get this far? First, Evil Weevil beat Triangular Triterabot and then flip flop, fly away, fly away, and don't bother us again. Panzer sunk Undertaker six feet under and then nudged Challenger 2 to the pit. The Evil Weevil team, how are you feeling? Pretty confident. Pretty confident? <laughs> well, I think he can take you out, though. No. I don't think he can do too much damage to us. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Give it up for the Evil Weevil team. Good luck, guys. Panzer, <laughs> you heard them. They think they're going to have you. No chance. But don't you think those tracks make you a bit vulnerable? Nah, the tracks, tracks are tough. Are they? Yeah, you can't hurt them. Yeah, you can't bend them or anything like that? Nah. You can't cut them with a Sir Killalot's uh, robotic arm? He could, but we're not going near him. You know, oh, <laughs> but what, what if they push you into Sir Killalot? I'd like to see him try. What's the fight and talk? <laughs> fight and talk. Prepare to do battle. The Panzer team. <laughs> this then Everybody for a place in, in the on. series semi-finals. Three, two, one. Activate. Robot Wars has found two stars, I think, here in the Evil Weevil team. Young Michael at the controls, who's looked pensive and serious throughout. And in the Panzer team, Crom on the left shakes his head. He's been a star for me, but he's shaking his head. Look at this. Panzer has not got off and away. There's a problem right at the start of the heat final. Panzer seems to have been immobilized. What a shame this is. Richard Jones and Simon Jones and Crom. Well, they were asked just before they went into the cherry picker, are you happy with your robot? That's an inquiry we always make. Yes was the reply. And obviously, something has gone wrong badly right at the start here. There's no life in Panzer at all. Richard at the controls can do nothing. In comes Evil Weevil. And don't forget Kevin Pritchard and the Evil Weevil team, the teacher there from Clantanum School, has a, a winning streak. He was part of the championship winning panic attack in the last series. And it looks to me as if Evil Weevil have won this one. They're slamming on the attack of Panzer again. First time we've really seen the lifting claws at the front. Tipped with blood, it would seem. 
and the lifeblood, the very lifeblood of Panzer is trickling away. Oh, what a shame. Well, there you see Kevin at the controls of Evil Weevil. And, and I think because they're splendid robots, they'll be disappointed in the outcome of this. They'd have wanted a better battle themselves. The great tracks of Panzer being lifted up by Kilolot. Well, those tracks alone weigh 20 kilos. And look at Kilolot just spinning it around as if it's a mere bauble. Nothing Richard Jones can do here whatsoever. The torch, the bash, they can only grin and bear it. Well done for getting to the heat final, but it's Evil Weevil who go to the semis. Well, Kilowatt saves the day. The Panzers are out. The winner is Evil Weevil. <laughs> young man you said you was going to go marching all the way into poland <laughs> and it didn't even start what went wrong it didn't start <laughs> well why didn't it start i don't know we'll tell you that soon enough but um we told you the tracks were tough the tracks were tough yeah they didn't even snap when um, Killerlot tried to get him it won't uh -huh. burn either but you know you're going back in your bunker you lot until next year mm -hmm. never mind give it up for panzer <laughs> Yes! <laughs> you're through to the series semi-finals. How do you think you're going to go in there? Reasonable. Reasonable? Yeah. I mean, well, you're not as confident you was about this one. <laughs> well, it depends who we're up against. Any robots out there that you hold particular fear who you don't want to get drawn against at the moment? Obviously, Panic Attack, because I was in the team last year, so... Yeah. We won that in the final. Yeah. You want that in the final? <laughs> yeah. uh, well, anyway, good luck for the series semi-finals. Give you. it up! For Evil Weevil! <laughs> well, if you think you can beat us, you're clutching at straws, because our robots rule on Robot Wars. Bye-bye. <laughs>